Hi everyone. Today's topic is radio lucent jaw lesions. In radio lucent jaw lesions, we have odontogenic lesions and non-odontogenic lesions. First come odontogenic lesions. This is the mandible. Here we have the teeth. So the odontogenic lesion is seen in relation to one tooth or a component of tooth and they are usually seen above the level of inferior alveolar canal or mandibular canal. This is These are the odontogenic lesions. Coming to non-odontogenic lesions, they usually have either no relation with the teeth or may involve large part of the bone in close proximity to two or more teeth. So, these lesions are located below the mandibular canal. So, non-odontogenic lesions below the mandibular canal or inferior alveolar canal, odontogenic lesions above the level of alveolar canal in relation with the teeth. Now, first we will learn about odontogenic lesions. In odontogenic lesions, we have radicular cyst, we have residual cyst, dentigerous cyst and odontogenic keratosis. In, in this video, we will be discussing about this four cysts. Now, coming to radicular cyst. Before going into this, first we sh should know what are the components of a teeth. We have a, this is a teeth, we have a root, we have a neck, we have a crown. So, now we will go into what is a radicular cyst. So, radicular cyst, it is a periapical cyst located in relation to the root of the tooth. So, what is a root? This is a root. In relation, this is a root, this is the neck and this is the crown. The cyst which is located in relation to the root of the tooth. That is a radicular cyst. So, it is a well-defined cyst. It is a well-defined cyst with a thin sclerotic rim around the root apex of a caries tooth. So, when you see a radicular cyst, there is an associated caries teeth. Go and see near the root, there is a well-defined cyst with a thin sclerotic rim around the root apex of a caries tooth. This is a radicular. Before going to into the pathology, you should know what are the parts, okay? This is the teeth. We have enamel. The inside part is the dentin. We have pulp. This is the gum. We have cementum and this is the root canal. Here we have the blood vessels and nerves which passes through the root canal into the pulp. Then coming to pathology of the radicular cyst. We have a caries teeth. So what happens? This Due to this infection of the tooth, it gets spread into the pulp. What happens when there is pulp infection? First, we, this is the apical region. First, there is periapical granuloma formation. So, after periapical granuloma formation, next it forms an abscess. Then, there will be a necrotic cavity within. So, afterwards, what happens? Uh, just remember, there are cells called epithelial crust of malasis. So, uh, what happens? Cavity is epithelized by odontogenic epithelium. That is the rest of malasis. Then we have a radicular cyst formation. Remember this diagram and you can just draw this diagram in the examination. Just a carried tooth, infection of the pulp. From there we will form a granuloma formation, abscess formation, necrotic cavity formation. With this cavity is epithelized by the odontogenic epithelium. Then we get a radicular cyst. So third or fifth decade. It comes from third to fifth decade. This is a radicular cyst. This is a radicular cyst. This is a well-defined cyst with sclerotic rim. Coming to residual cyst. So these are all odontogenic cysts. They are present above the mandibular canal. So coming to residual cyst. So what happened? This is the radicular cyst. This is a caries tooth. They have removed the caries tooth. But the, they didn't see the cyst. So what happens? This is the residual cyst. So we have a radicular cyst remaining after the tooth has been extracted. We have a caries teeth. They remove the caries teeth. And the, the radicular cyst remaining is the residual cyst. It is unilocular, well-defined cyst with a thin sclerotic cream. Then in coming to dentigerous cyst. It is also called as follicular cyst. So uh, dentigerous cyst. So it is a non-inflammatory cystic lesion of the joint. Dentigerous cyst is a non-inflammatory, remember. It occurs in young adults and adolescents. So, it is a well-defined unilocular 
well defined unilateral round to ovoid cyst with smooth margins it surrounds the crown of the unerupted or impacted tooth usually the third molar okay it surrounds the so what is a crown so coming to anatomy so this is a root this is a neck this is a crown surrounding the crown okay so it surrounds the crown of the unerupted or impacted tooth usually the third molar so roots of the tooth project outside the lesion as it surrounds the crown this is a root root will be outside the lesion that's an important point so coming to pathology what happens so what is this why the cyst occurs so this is one embryology just remember this is the dental follicle epithelium enamel dentin this is a periodontal ligament we have cementum and this is the dental papillae so what happens in the dentigerous cyst there is accumulation of fluid between unerupted impacted tooth and the epithelium of the dental follicle we have a dental follicle we have an epithelium this is an unerupted tooth here the fluid gets accumulated between the epithelium of the dental follicle between the impacted tooth and the epithelium of the dental follicle that surrounds the tooth this is the tooth we have a dental follicle with epithelium that surrounds the tooth between this epithelium and the tooth the fluid accumulates and so we get the dentigerous cyst so on mri t1 is hypointense t2 is hyperintense so on contrast there is a thin enhancing rim okay one of the viva question is what are the complications of dentigerous cyst so if we get a mural amyloblastoma or odontogenic carcinoma so this odontogenic carcinoma is very rare you may get from a dentigerous cyst amyloblastoma coming to odontogenic keratocyst is odontogenic keratocyst mainly occurs in second to fourth decades of life they are unilocular or multilocular they are well defined cysts with scalloped margins they have antero posterior expansion they have antero posterior expansion they have scalloped margins there is no expansion al along the buccolingual region and it can be unilocular or multilocular when there are multiple cysts it's seen in basal cell nevus syndrome or gorling gotz syndrome so it's unilocular or multilocular well defined cyst with scalloped margins with antero posterior expansion it is also associated with unerupted tooth so one of the dd is dentigerous cyst dentigerous cyst is associated with unerupted tooth it involves a crown and root is outside we have here it is associated with un unerupted tooth it can envelop the entire tooth when large when it becomes large and in, including the roots so in mri we have t1 is intermediate to high signal t2 is low to high signal diffusion restriction is present thin or thick rim enhancement is present or contrast so it's an aggressive cyst mostly seen in the posterior body and ramus of the mandible it's well defined corticated there may be cortical thinning with alveolar margin breach and with secondary infection with the oral cavity flora so one thing you have to remember here is so there are more chances of recurrence when you remove it surgically why there are more chances of recurrence because it shows basal layer budding and formation of daughter cyst outside the primary cyst so there should be a wide excision for it just removing the cyst there will be some daughter cyst outside the primary cyst so if you don't remove them there will be recurrence thank you